guys, how are you doing? And welcome to Warlord Wednesday, and today we're going to be looking at gaming tiles. Now, you're going to say, hold on, wait a minute there, Mr. Temps. What happened to the England versus Germany game that you promised that we would see today? Well, I've put it back because if I don't show you this now, you'll never see the process because I'm terrible at recording stuff when I'm, uh, when I'm really getting into it. So I want you to see the process, and I want you to understand how this works. Now... People often say to me that they're very intimidated or they just don't understand or they can't uh, build terrain, scenery or even gaming tables. And I'm going to say to you today, hogwash, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. And I'm going to show you a nice, easy process because you've been doing this since you're a kid. Don't be intimidated by scenery, terrain and all that sort of stuff in gaming tables because you've been doing this since you're a kid. And I'll tell you why and I'll tell you how, because... If you were like me, as a child, you would tear things apart to rebuild and make things. So if you wanted to build, say, a wall, you would line up books uh, and you would put um, cardboard towers next to them and stuff like that. So straight away, you're thinking about and building uh, scenery, okay? Now, if you're out in the garden, like me, I used to make like mud walls and stuff like that that I could put my plastic soldiers behind uh, and along with my giant robots and fight battles. So straight away, you're sort of building scenery and tables and stuff like that, but on a massive scale so or in a sort of like very basic sort of scale as a kid so you've always been doing this the set the difference is now is that you're you're a little bit older you've been painting miniatures for quite a while now and you really want to have your own gaming table but you're a bit stuck with how you want to do it or you just don't understand the processes um, and I'm going to show you a nice easy way and fun way uh, that you can engage friends to help you and also Get, up, get on with building a beautiful table. Don't be intimidated by scenery. Don't be intimidated by uh, terrain because it's not that hard. I can do it, you can do it. And that's how you should be thinking. Okay, and, and I'm like 44 now, okay? Uh, and I've been doing this for a long time and I've been having fun with it and you can do this, trust me. Okay, so how do we start off? Well, originally on the last gaming board that we built, we had a uh, beautiful wooden boards with ribbing and stuff like that. Now this time, uh, I want this to be a bit more cost effective uh, and as, as much as that was great fun to do and it was nice to do that sort of style of board, I'm going for something that's a little bit more cost effective where you can use either an MDF uh, board uh, and cut it into uh, six tiles of two by two. Uh, that's six tiles that should be giving you a six by four table which is reasonable, uh, even a 4x4 four four table is a reasonable to play on, uh, but 6x4 is completely fine. Uh, if you want to go bigger, totally up to you. If you've got the space to do it, go for it, have fun. Um, you don't have to rush these projects either. These can be things that can just be sort of ticking away in the background. Now, I generally find that a tile... I'll have a sort of production line of stuff going where you, I'll have like maybe four boards going at the same time and each in different stages. Um, so, you know, each tile is being worked on, but it's all at different stages. And I'll go back and I'll think, oh, that looked nice on there. So I'll, I'll redo stuff and add stuff to it. And I'm constantly doing that because I'll dig something out and think, oh, that looks really cool on there. So let's start at the beginning. How do we start off? Well, I like to use PVA um as the basis of everything now pva for me is a brilliant product um, and i tend to use uh unibond which is here uh, and it's a super pva the universal adhesive primer and bonding aid now this is fantastic stuff because also when you dilute it down five to one uh, it is still amazing to use now i tend to have a big tub of uh, diluted pva uh, for um, the after effects but for the main beginning this is what i do uh, this stuff is absolutely brilliant it comes in different sizes now i've got about six of these uh, and <laughs> you should stock up on it it's really good it's a really good product to use and i absolutely love it and it makes it makes brilliantly for um, uh, when it dries it's absolutely solid as well and you can sort of see it uh, around here and stuff like that I mean it's just it dries solid it's beautiful okay so 
I use that as the basis to everything on my boards. It, it's a glue that goes down that I can sprinkle sand onto. Now I also use it to hold down things like insulation foam as well, which you can see all around the board uh, that I've been uh, using to create mounds and hills or just sort of ridges in the ground and stuff like that to break it up. Now, the nice thing about insulation foam is you can buy it from any DIY store, uh, B&Q's, uh, home base, places like that will have it. Now it comes in very amount of thickness um, and you can even buy it online as you know different thicknesses and stuff like that but uh, be prepared to pay for it because it does cost a little bit but if you're walking past the skip and you see it in there it generally has two silver sort of sides to it sort of thing that's like a silver paper which you can peel off uh, if you see it in the skip ask if you can take it out of the skip if you see it in the rubbish ask the person's uh, permission and take it because it's really great stuff for modeling and a lot of people use it now I've used it to create some mounds and stuff like that now I need mounds on the table because otherwise without having a different style of undulating uh, uh, textures and stuff like that you're going to be stuck with a very flat looking board and you can even use off cuts like I've used on here to create little mounds which will once painted up uh, and once with snow added will give that a little bit of a lift out of the ground and make it look something amazing. Now I want you to picture this as a whole winter board. Now we're going for the Arden look sort of thing. So we're going to have some big trees in there which I've already glued the bases into. Uh, so we've only got two on this one um, but we're going to have some blown up trees scattered around and stuff like that um, and loads of bits of debris and stuff and you know what it'd be nice to have some craters and we're going to be looking at another section of the board in a second where we can see how craters are made but the nice thing about this is once I've done that I then go over the top of it with sand and I sprinkle it all over the place now make sure you coat everything in PVA okay paint everything in PVA and then you can go over the top with your sand in a sieve and I use fine sand and I use coarse sand to create different uh, sort of textures on the board and I usually use a load of gravel grit uh, I use cork all sorts of stuff that I can get my hands on even down to uh, coffee uh, granules as well and I mix that all into a, a, a little pot where I will say a bucket or a chocolate um, container, a uh, plastic container where I keep all my material mixed up in there. I'll have it in separate containers like uh, to use and stuff like that, but I like to make a, a mixture as well because it's just useful to have. Okay, so once I sprinkled that on there, I then let it settle. I leave it for about a day, then I go back out over it with the diluted PVA. Now you can either paint it on or you can, um, inject it using a syringe. Now I like to inject it with a syringe because I get more control of where it's going and it also enables me to build uh, up ridge sections like round here and round there and along here and stuff like that and just inject it into it so it goes all the way in. Uh, once that's dried again I will coat it again with another coat of PVA. It's important to do that because anything that's loose will just come off the board or it will be caught up in the PVA. Now, once that's done, you can go into adding in your details. So here I've started adding in some sort of rocks and stuff like that, which um, I want to create a sort of, a, a, a sort of like rocky outcrops for when I put the snow down and stuff like that and grass can go around the sides and stuff. So it just sort of adds more detail and fleshes out the tile. So let's look at the next step and I'll see you guys in a second. Howdy guys, welcome back and here we have a next stage of our tile. So as I was saying, everything gets coated in a watered down PVA. The reason for doing that is, is because once it dries, it will soak into it, it would have soaked into everything and it would have made it a lot more solid as well. Because the last thing you want is be able to put your finger into stuff and it all move around. Uh, I tend to find that a couple of coats of this will work really, really well. And uh, you know, you let it dry, you go back, you let it dry, you go back. And once it's in a state that is quite solid, you're ready for the next step, which is to paint it. But what I want to talk to you about on this section, while this is still wet, is that you can create some amazing effects. Now, one of the effects being that I wanted to create craters for the game because you mentioned the forest in Arden where they were holding the line and stuff like that. There was a lot of explosions, uh, artillery fire and stuff like that. And if you've seen Band of Brothers, you see all the forest being blown up, craters being created uh, and debris sent everywhere. Now, the nice thing about uh, using products and materials is that you can create some wonderful effects. Now, I wanted to start off with the crater being um, 
sort of done in a very basic and simple way. Uh, I don't want to add any plastics or resin to it, I just want to create a very basic sort of shape that I can build up on uh, and once it's all painted and extras are added on I can sprinkle in the snow and build up layers of the snow around it and create darkened areas within the inside of it. Because this board's flat we can't really cut into it uh, and we're not raising it up uh, with um, insulating foam, we're basically creating it ourselves and plus you know you want to be able to put troops in there and stuff like that so uh, I find that sometimes craters with flattened bottoms look a little bit better uh, than the ones that have huge great big holes in it because the troops just can't stand on the edges uh, or on the sides and they just tend to fall over. Okay so how do we do this? Well it's an easy process we just take our sand and we just build up a circle like so and what we then do is we take our PVA and water mix and we just uh, cover it in there. So I use it, like I said, I use a syringe and it just gently sort of like squirt, 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 squirt. And it just soaks in and then you do another layer and you keep doing that and you keep doing uh, But it works really, really well. Now then what I do is I add my debris to it uh, and I build it up again. And again, I inject it and stuff like that. So once it's all dry, I then coat it in PVA, but I want to show you something else on this tile. Okay guys, welcome back. Okay, so a nice easy way of doing stuff is uh, when you want to create, uh, for example, um, like vehicle tracks and stuff like that, uh, you're going to laugh, uh, but what I tend to do is I will put a load of sand down, a uh, load of PVA over the top of it sort of thing. Uh, let that sort of all soak in. I mean, I leave it for about five minutes to soak in. And then what I will do is I will take a vehicle and I will literally do my tracks like this and just run them up. Now, what that does is that creates a lovely effect. Uh, it gives you ridges and stuff that you can work on because we really want to get that sort of like, you know, uh, vehicle, we know when vehicles head through snow, you get a lot of dirty slush and stuff like that. Uh, and the snow becomes stained brown uh, where it's been constantly trodden in or driven through uh, in like muddy areas and stuff like that. And you tend to get a lot of snow, snow that builds up along the sides. So this is what this ridge is gonna be for us. We're gonna be covering that all in snow to build up those ridges and stuff like that. We've even got some uh, dead horses in there and maybe a dead cow because you've even got a dead cow on the board. Then what have you got? It's little things like that, attention to detail. Now we've used, we've got buildings here um, which I've had laying around now. You can buy these from Warlord Games. Uh, it's the plastic buildings that they do which are really great for this. I mean it's gonna they're gonna look absolutely amazing uh, and I've started I've just now started working on the interiors of those um, and we'll dress those up as well and make them look absolutely amazing uh, and don't forget you know these will have snow in them and stuff like that. We could even put like a little uh, uh, outpost tent and stuff in there just to make it look that more much more amazing and put some road signs in there and some telegraph poles and it will just stand out and just look absolutely astonishing now it's a beautiful board it's going to be a beautiful board you just have to get it in your head what it needs to look like and that's the hard part sometimes drawing it out will help you and sometimes uh, creating uh, visual images or collecting visual images from the net uh, will really, really help the process, the creative process in creating what you need. So let's move on to the next stage. And welcome back. Okay, so the next stage is I generally then paint everything. Once it's dry, I paint everything. And then I go back and I start adding in extra detail because, you know, I need trees in it. So I'll put uh, the tree stumps in there um, and they're the little bases that the trees stick into and sort of just cover them up with bits of debris and stuff like that. And I'll also go in and add other detail like a you know blown up tank, uh, which will look just amazing there. Um, and it's little things you at this stage you can then go, oh, actually, do you know what? This will look cool there. Actually, I'll add this into it. And I wanted to follow on the, the dirt uh, or the sort of weathered tracks and stuff. Uh, from the other board just there so it leads into this um, and it all matches once it's all put together and we wanted buildings along one side because I feel that it just really gives something to the board so you can do brilliant missions where 
you know, you've got to get across the board and, and take over that side or, you know, you've got one side defending, the other side attacking and stuff. So it just gives you these little bits of extra fun uh, and little things to enjoy the game. And, and it brings detail to it. And that's the main thing. And that's what we're looking for it to do. OK, so let's move on to the next step. Howdy guys, welcome back. So when I say boards are ever changing, especially in the beginning when you're doing stuff to them, you'll think about stuff and go, oh, actually, do you know what? That'd be quite cool. So over there, I've just sculpted that bit of ridge that matches onto the uh, the first tile we saw uh, and links it all together. So we've got a nice flat ridge over the top with a little bit of a crater in between. Um, so, you know, we can play around with that and add some debris and all sorts of things around it. Now, what I tend to do is once it's all dry and it's all rock solid, I then hit it with a top coat of um, Sandex masonry paint, uh, bitter chocolate. Now you can buy this in any DIY store. There's, they probably have different uh, brands that do exactly the same thing. The reason why I go for bitter chocolate is I find it a really good uh, color for uh, sort of like a basing for the ground so to speak, and it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, so I've been using this pretty much on every single board I ever do. So here we have our basic board. Uh, now we're at the stage where we can start painting this and then we can start adding in our grass. Now I'm gonna see you in the next stage, which will be the painting and the grassing stage. Uh, and then we're gonna add our snow, which is gonna be so much fun. I'm really looking forward to this. Okay guys, I'm gonna see you soon. I hope this helps. You take care, you be safe, and see you next week.